Good morning, Reverend Allen. We are live. Good morning, everyone. Can, can you really hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Cinnamon Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School on 29066 Eaton. Dr. John D. Duckworth, pastor. I am Reverend Ida Allen to bring to you the lesson this morning, which is the subject running on empty. Mm -hmm. Now, the lesson on the board, you will see a vehicle with the subject running on empty. When you see, when I saw this, and when you look at the board, you see running on empty, but there's a vehicle right there. And you see the little slash that says empty and full. In real life, you would be thinking, who's running on empty? Have you ever thought that a car runs on empty in reality? Or that a lawnmower runs on without being filled? So the subject gets me to thinking that where are you really saying and relating to running on empty? So I come up with the idea is running on empty, meaning that you actually need to be filled up. That can say it when I'm giving an example of the vehicle fact. You can't run on, you can say within yourself, well, it looked like I need to be, look like I need to fill the car up. So you're going for it to be filled, but you can't run on an empty car because it has to be filled. Now you get into it, you can feel it. It can be, because in a vehicle, it can say that the fact is, it's half, quarter tank, filled, but completely, you don't have to fill it up in order to run the vehicle. But it need to be filled in order to run. So the idea is, are you filled up? And if you are empty, you need to be filled up. Now, if the writer here who gave the subject is simply talking about the fact that the unsaved are the saved, who needs to be truly filled up? The saved that comes to know Christ is empty. They're empty. I, I just completely till they come to know Christ as Savior. But could it be talking about the believers that for some things in their life, they have become empty? What has happened in the life that they become empty? Now, the scripture that Isaiah says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. What is Isaiah saying? And to bring him with this lesson, it gives you the idea of saying, just be patient. But he says running on empty, the, the word empty means you're unoccupied, pour it out. If you have a bucket and you have to mop, then there's water needed in that bucket for you to be mopping your floors. So really, what can you find in your spiritual life all the time to be filled up? What fills up the believer? If the believer has been empty, what fills the believer up? What can fill your spirit, the spiritual life of the believer all the time? It can be what? Somebody give me an example. What you thinking? If you're running on empty and you are running out, completely have run out of empty, and really is talking to the believer that you have, what, can, what do you need to be filled up? I think prayer and scripture can fill you up or build you up may not be full but you you can you can you can get something to to get you going thank you i, I would say prayer and studying the word of god and learning how to deal with being empty okay and i, I would also say uh fellowship with the right people amen exactly. Like I, I, I agree. I agree. And I think what I think what I think I agree with what 
what's been said and when you lump it all together it's a it's it kind of comes into the discipline the spiritual disciplines in your life that you practice on a continuous basis is what helps keep you full and what helps keep you keep you strengthened and when you start to run on empty if you can go back to your prayers and go back to your reading of your bible and go back to your fasting those are disciplines that we should practice as believers Definitely. yes that's something that we should all stick to at all times <laughs> daily right. devotionals, daily devotionals help me uh be uh refilled or filled in my fuel tank when I'm low. Um, daily devotionals help me a lot. Amen. And right. uh, along with what everyone else said, I think um, what helps me is standing on, on his promises and his truth and knowing that um, what I'm going through, if I've already gone through it, if he brought me through it before. So reflecting back on what God has already done, it helps to fill me to keep me moving, knowing that he's able to do it again. And what what I find helpful for me is I go to a gas station called GMBC. And there mm-hmm. you get three types of fuel. You get the Father, the Son, and the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit, all for the mm-hmm. same amount of money. Exactly. And I think that's a mm-hmm. feeling because we need that to go further in the week. And then, and then when we feel like we're running low on fuel, then we have Wednesday Bible study. Exactly. You extra tank because you don't want to, your tank to get low. I always was taught that you keep a minimum of half a tank of gas at any time you may need to go somewhere. But mm-hmm. I'm from the school. I'm going to keep it full as much as possible because I don't know what I'm going to encounter along the highways and the byways. My, my, exactly. my. <laughs> Man. And then Saturday yeah. Sunday school. And it's all, yes, it's also like participating in that which God would have us to do. And we don't want to run low. We always want to be filled up and, and that spiritual life that can fill us our, our, all of our lives all the time is the what? Holy Spirit. It fills us. Someone look in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 15. And you can stick to because I have to go over our particular uh, scripture, Isaiah 40, 31. But the knowing that to feel us and keep us filled is the Holy Spirit. With all three trying in God. To someone Isaiah 32, 15. Yes. Until at last the spirit is poured down on us from heaven. Then once again, enormous crops will come. That's from the Living Bible. From the Living Bible, okay. Um, someone just give me quickly King James uh, uh, Bible, uh, the After Five Bible, just another translation of the same. Until the Spirit is poured out upon us from on high and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. Okay. The Holy Spirit that feels out on us, uh, that lets us know um, and can fill us, that that can fill us if we have become empty, that that can fill us totally. Joel chapter 2, verse Job 22, 28? Joel, yes, J-O-E-L. With my <clears throat> call, come on. You said Joel chapter 2, verse 28, correct? Yes. Okay, it says, and I'm reading from the uh, New Living Translation. It says, then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Yes. And also in the King James Version, it says, pouring out God's spirit, pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
the Holy Spirit ministers to the believers. Let us look in John chapter 14, 16 and verse 26. What does the spirit gives within us that can keep us from running out in the first place as the spirit goes on us and God pulls out that spirit on us that can keep us thus far? John 14, what? Verse 16 and verse 26. And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. And 26. Yes. But when the father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Exactly. Thank you. It's the, the Holy Spirit, our comforter and our helper that lets us know everything before we feel like we need filling up. He already know and keeps us when the spirit is poured out on us to keep, to be filled completely up. The last one is Isaiah 61 verse one. These particular scriptures that God and directed me to say, you're not going to see them on the board until a few minutes we get to the board. But to have any questions that's on these, the last one that I'm here is Isaiah 61, verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. Thank you. So we're coming now to the scripture that deals with running on empty. It's Isaiah 40, verse 31. The King James Version, someone can read it uh, on the board. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh-oh, I just lost myself. Okay, we will renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. All right. So Isaiah the prophet, uh, the deliverance of Israel that he did, because Israel complained all the time about things that they wasn't cared for, but yes, they was of their deliverance that uh, God had given to them. And it, it, it talks about renew your strength, because when it says, but those who wait, wait, meaning what? Those who are patient and just sit there and wait on the Lord, because if you wait on the Lord, even when Isaiah is saying that renew your strength, that's one of the topics, he invites you to talk your weary eyes off of all problems around you just to wait and be patient on the Lord, because he's coming. May not come when you want him, but he always on time. Factual truth. Renew that strength. And they mount up like wings, like eagles. Do anybody know in the South about eagles or the flying of certain types of birds and things and the way they fly and how they run? Anybody from the South? Have you seen any way back in the South that was birds that get landing so quick as they fly? And it's saying with us, we are like, what? we're having what? If you mount up with wings, just like the eagles would do of the wings, they shall run. But the idea is you running, but you should not be weary because what they do and what you do, you walk and not think. In order to keep us from being running on empty is the Holy Spirit that guides and directs. And when you think of it, a renewing your strength, is it impossible? Are you running on empty? But if you're running on empty, you can put that on the board now. We're coming from the introduction uh, saying, are you running on empty? If you're running on empty, why are you running on empty? Do you run on empty because of what? What's came in your life that you think that you just done run out? Did you run out of your kindness towards people? Psalms 145. Did someone read that 145? Is that running on empty because you lost your kindness to people as you used to have it in your life? How did you lose it? What happened that made you lose it and that you was no kind? Because of God's unfailing love, 
to you to see his kindness. He extend kindness all the time. And it should be around one at all time daily. You have to go get rid of your offenses and your forgiveness, truly forgive as Christ would have us to give. That type of kindness that you become empty on that kindness, Psalms 145, eight to 10. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise ye the Lord. Your faithful people exhort you. And you should carry that great example. You have to get back that kindness that is number one in Christ in our lives, that we should show that kindness one to another. And the next one says, no time with Jesus. Psalm 62, five and eight. Why? You do not have that time that you should spend directly with Jesus. And one of them is totally number one, our prayer life that directs us daily. And as someone has said, it's one of the best that you can have. To love God so much that you will spend what? Time, number one. And that's one of the main things that we should do. Prayer, and as you said, daily reading the word of God. You can't never stop. You have to always get in that close relationship with your father. The spirit is speaking to you. Make God the top of your life. But run for God in everything that we do at all times. And you just be still and give everything to God. Someone has that. For God, Psalm 62, five and eight. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. Eight, trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Yeah, Okay, someone. Oh, 1030 Chicago time. Oh. Get you some breakfast. We can hear you. So, so no time uh, with Jesus should be spent for togetherness and knowing the word of God daily as we live. The next one is, uh, are we empty? Are you running on empty because of the unity together in Ephesians 4, 3 and 4? That unity, the fight together, join together, and make what closeness and oneness to, together. That commonness cause of action. You're not only developing that unity together, but you only don't stick with just saying you gotta have action. So you need the spirit to guide and direct you of the empty to fill you up. That unity together. Now, no compassionate love, John three. 13, 34, and 35. Did you run out of that? What made you run out of that? No compassionate and love one for another. That's what we should do. For God commended us to love others as we love ourselves. As we see, all of those could be in pain and in need, all others, but we should what? We should be like Christians, compassionate and love. The agape love, the Greek agape love. And in first, uh, <clears throat> the Bible talks about that love so much that God gives so much to us, the unconditional love that he has. And he restores love in all times and in all situations that we are in. What about us? We should follow that love and compassionate of God and show that love and compassionate to others. John 13, 35. A new commandment. No, yeah. I got the wrong one. A new uh, commandment. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. 35, by this all people will know that you are my disciple, if you have love for one another. See, what is man? Loving one another and showing action. 
to that love. If anybody you find that is in need, then it shows the love and the compassion that God's exemplified for us to do. And that's something that we have to stay with. So if we run it on empty, because of all of these, no kindness, no time with Jesus, unity together, and no compassionate love, one for another, and tops love for the Father that gave his life that we might have eternal life. That tops love should be shown directly one to another. Now, the next one is uh, you running on empty because you haven't been listening to God, Deuteronomy 28, 2 and 6. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. So are you listening to God? Are you being quiet? Are you meditating? He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto him. So in listening, you should be what? Why? Listen to that what God says to us. And not only listening, but following that which he commands us to do. So feeling, if you was empty on that, Holy Spirit can feel you. Just listen to God. The next, did you become empty on no courage? Why are, you, why are you running on empty? Because you have no courage, Psalm 31, 24. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord, the NIV. All right. Uh, give me uh, another one translation if someone has that. Uh, I think it was the Living Bible. The, the um, New Living Translation says, so be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. So it's correct. Why is it that we seem within ourselves we have less courage, but God is our all? So does anyone look at this? Are you running on empty? Have anyone fell into this category here? Have you run out of any one of these in your life, Jan? Or maybe even right now, you don't have enough time with Jesus and you don't have enough compassionate and love with others and you haven't unified together, together that we may all work together, number one, even with Jesus. Have anyone had any of this? Are you running on empty because of it in your life? And what have you done? I, I think, Reverend Allen, and, and I can only speak for myself, there, there are times when life just life itself can get you to a place to where you, you don't feel these things. You know, you don't feel the kindness towards others, you know, like you should, or you don't feel we'll get off by ourselves because of circumstances and things that we are up against. And we don't feel that unity with one another. And I think many of us, especially during the time of COVID, that unity piece played a critical role in our lives because we couldn't get together. And, and, and sometimes with our own intellect, we don't listen to God because we think we know best what's, what we should do. So we don't always listen. And in times when we should be strong and courageous, um, we're, we're, we're not, we're not. And, and I can say for me personally, I felt these things before but it's that going back to those things that you're talking about, going back to your prayer life, going back to your study in the word, being present, like someone said, in Bible study. Now that church is um, open again, getting to the Sunday morning worship experience, so I can get that unity that I need. So I think all of these uh, reality in the lives of a believer is not somebody that don't trust God and don't believe God. These are lives realities that we go through. But because we know God and God loves us, has that agape love 
for mm -hmm. us. God doesn't turn his back on us because we're not feeling kind, because we're not feeling unified. God is always there for us and we can turn to God to get the strength that we need so we don't have to keep running on empty. Thank you so much, Dr. Nelson. And one of these things, sometimes we can think we don't simply realize that I don't have enough compassionate and love for other people until sometimes it comes up to be shown that you knew that somebody was in need, but you didn't come around. That's why God is always on our side and he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But sometimes we can have friends who say they are truly our friends, but they don't come around and they will forsake us, but God will never, never forsake us. But as humanly, we see some of us sometimes within ourselves and sometimes we don't come front with it to simply say, Lord, help me. I need your help, Lord. Would you just please come? And when you call on Jesus, he said, you have not because you ask not. But I will give that, and it's according to his will. A lot of time when we pray, sometimes don't get the idea that it's your will, it is God's will. Because without you, you be nothing and you have nothing. It wasn't for God that surprised and give all this to you. So there are times in our lives that we might feel this, but God can get us out of it. If we wanna get out of it, just talk to God and ask God about it. So anybody else at anyone that's not even written here that you might think you're running, and you have run out, you just have run out, and you're just completely empty? Well, okay. if I can reinforce what um, Dr. Nelson or acknowledge something that she said, like these are the things that we go through as light of believers. Oftentimes, sometimes when you're growing in the faith and you're growing through these things, you don't feel always like, okay, am I truly um believing enough do am i exhibiting enough faith because you're going through these but once you realize that that you do as believers we do go through these when i think about um something that happened in 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 the it's the past it's not happening now but in the past you know not too long ago i was just doing a whole lot at work and um you know actively engaged with the church and there was a lot of things happening in my personal life in my family life just a lot of things and as far as the compassion I believe my job I'm I was showing that because it's a ministry in of itself but the things that were happening in my family also had me being compassionate toward others who were struggling and I was trying to be there for them the part that I felt like that I needed to remember is the time spending that time of course I had my prayer life going Going, but you know, it was almost like okay, an agenda. Pray that that when I needed to step back and actually spend some time with Jesus and listen, listen to what God was saying to me, and that's when I received my refilling. So I thank God that um, the Holy Spirit allows me to know when I need to do that. You know, I could feel it physically, like okay, it's time for you to back up, get in this present. Pray fast, listen to what God has to say. Thank you, uh, Sister Johnson. The idea is knowing God, and even what Isaiah is saying to re renew your strength, he invites you to take your weary eyes off of the problem and gives the problem to God of the Holy Spirit that guides and direct us and surround us, and it's our comforter to bring to our memory things that we should do. And sometimes you can say, Oh, I didn't know that. I'm so. Oh, I, well, I'm. I, I didn't. I don't. I didn't mean to walk by you or not speak to you or anything. I didn't. But the Holy, when you give to God and ask God to direct you and guide you, the Holy Spirit can just bring that to your memory to let you know, guide and direction. I'm right here to let you know it, and that is great too of us to know what God can do. Now, when we get to the second part. It, the writer actually was talking about that relates directly to Isaiah uh, 40, verse 31. Uh, Isaiah, the prophet of the delivery, you know, his book is named by him. Uh, he's that great prophet that names, means God is salvation. And God will direct and guide you in all things. And the second part here, it talks about no courage as we finish with that. But the other one is, do challenges of life seem to be unbearable? Right up under there. 
it talks about being unbearable. So God, what? Oh, I think you got that scripture on board. First Corinthians 10, 13. The challenge of life seen unbearable. Someone please read that. No temptation has overtaken you except such as in common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, do you remember, we always didn't quote that whole scripture. We would just say, there's nothing God can put on you that you can't bear. Nothing that is on you that you can't bear. And we don't read the whole scripture or letting us know what God can do. The last part of that scripture, please read it again. The last part. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So how are you going to escape it? What's going to make you to escape it? What, what do that last kind of verse say? Who, what's making you to escape, escape it? Yeah. By yourself or who? Yes. Yeah. Right. Open you to bear. Yeah. But Jesus said that he put on that you can't tolerate. He says what he put on, that's what no temptation that you can't bear why you can't bear it what's in life you can't bear if jesus said that anything that you can't bear what i can i can make a way out of no way mm -hmm. now someone will just want to read that again in the king james version also sister, sister allen if it after reading that King James Version, would it be okay if we look at it in that New Living Translation? Too? Yes, anyone. Thank you so much. Yeah. The, the, the New Living, I just looked at it and it kind of kind of hit me. Um, mm -hmm. But if, if you start in 12, it said, if you, if you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful because um, um, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, period, in this translation. Then it says, and God is faithful, period. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand, period. When you are tempted, comma, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. So that you can endure. So exactly. So that's to me. I'm going to go through some stuff, but God is faithful. <laughs> Amen. I love that you were that um, emphasis, placing emphasis on the commas and the periods. Yeah. Is if you do anything about grammar, you know that comma is just a pause. Just a but pause. the period is is a guarantee. It stops. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God is faithful. Period. <laughs> and in the New Revised Standard Version, instead of temptation, it has testing. Mm. So when you're being tested. Mm -hmm. You know, you're being tempted is one thing, but when, when you are being tested, mm -hmm. he will also provide the way out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When, when, when that test comes, because God can test us. Mm -hmm. He can test our number one. What could, what could be one of the things that God could be testing us about? That sometime we have little what? Faith. All right. All right. Because even on the boat, what did he say to the disciples? Oh, ye of little what? Faith. Is it sometime in our lives we see that our faith should be strong and ask God even to renew our strength. But we want to just sit there and let it be just what small and not have enough faith to believe that God can do it. I believe he can. I know he can. Because what he did for me, he'll do for you. There's no respect of person, no favoritism here. God got it. 
So it lets us know anything that we sometimes feel like it is so unbearable. And even in Philippians, I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. But if you ask him to be strengthened and God does strengthen you. Now, some of those things that is unbearable and is really, it just, it, it just can't seem to get over it. Mm -hmm. And you can't really in your life tolerate it. Mm -hmm. You just done what? Run out. Now, number one you see on the board is what? Number one, those that you can't find it difficult to unbear, the challenge of life that seem almost like for you to bear is impossible, is what? What is the first one there? Okay. All things are possible. Uh, okay, go ahead. It was a lost job. Yes, Philippians 419 says what? If you say, Oh, but I just can't take it. And also, have you noticed uh, UAW has done what? Struck. Okay. Now, they can go on a long time. I think one time they did. And it's a difficult with the union and not the salary. What's so difficult in that is they can come aboard uh, some of the things that the UAW uh, people will get more out of it. But on their strike, it can go also to the salary workers can come under with. But in the idea of your life, you just lost a job. You could have been fired. You could have been laid off. But you lost it and you thought this challenge is just, I can't face it. I have children to take care of. Because of the pandemic, everything has gone all over to be so high. And I very rarely can make it. Now, UAW, I believe, maybe give $500 weekly. I'm not so sure, Reverend Allen Wick, for Christ later time, but I'm not so sure uh, coming up and they uh, agreeing on what they want to agree for it, I think is maybe the first one, 20% off that they're asking for, 30%, I believe, on that. But you have lost this job. What should you remember, Philippians 419? Just right off the bat, after you're facing that challenge, what should you do? Philippians 419. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ. Exactly. So what do you think? Give, give me your thoughts that would come up that you work for GM, Chrysler, Ford, or any other job, and you have been faced with the challenge of have lost it. And it seemed unbearable to you that you lost it. You can make it because what God says, I'm with you, take care of you, don't worry. Because what? I will supply. Notice that what he's saying. Why are you trying to figure out what God can do? Because he said, I will supply your what? And even God, even sometime I want. But all of our needs he's going to supply. So why are you worrying about it? Why are you worrying? That's that that that's that's one thing sometimes you can't really think of it. And I want to say in the word, why are you worrying? Why are you allowing to be worried? Sometimes life is hard to figure out. Challenges and obstacles arise that we we just don't know, and we haven't had that plan in our life. Yet God is always there to take us by the hand and walks with us step by step. God shows his love in unbearable ways when you are facing difficult circumstances in your life. Pray about it. Stop worrying. Cheer up. Get off of that. Worrying and knowing what God can do for you. Someone find also Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 and 27. Just got to stop worrying. Just got to get up. As God to, to, to really free you from worrying. 
Now, if you want to just keep on, every time we think about certain things that we feel like we cannot reach and we cannot supply, we just sit there and worry. We let worry worry us. Got to get out of it. You said 25 through what? Matthew 6, 25 and 27. Okay, I have it. Um, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? That's the NIV. You, you finished 27, right? Verse 27. Yes. Right. So that lets, that lets us know what, when they say, take no thoughts. Why are you worrying? What makes you worry? Because you should take what? You can do all things. Christ can do all things. What? Through you. He will strengthen you. He's always near you. In our darkest hour, in the middle of the night, he's always in our darkest hour. But weeping may do in night, but what joy? Who brings that joy? Christ is right there with us. God is always near us in our deepest hours of the day. He never, never leaves us. You can be overly concerned about certain things in life, anxiety, but the power of the Holy Ghost is with us should be totally surrendered to God. Can someone give the fear? What about the fear? Have you ever had fear in your life? Number one, what it would be 2020, you had what? Did, he, did you have really the fear? Did fear override? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sign man. Does it, did it override faith? Faith override fear. Hebrew 13, six. Deacon Nicholson and um, someone else, Isaiah 4113. Hebrews 13, 6. Just a second. I will. Oh, wait. I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? So what about your comment on fear? So did anybody else find Isaiah 41, 13? For I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. So we don't have to worry about that. Anybody that had a fear of anything in life that kind of bounds you to say, this is just unbearable, I cannot take. COVID-19, what? What type did you have there? Did fear try to override you? That you kept believing thousands of people died and you had that fear? And was it fear to put on a mask or was it truthful to put on a mask? It was both. Was it really? I, I can't, I, I was, it was fearful. All right. When you start talking about thousands of people dying daily. Mm -hmm. I, I wish, uh, Reverend Allen, I wish I could tell you, ooh, I was so strong. I was so mm -hmm. strong. I was so this. I literally would get up in the morning and walk into a hospital and didn't know if I was going to come out of there still mm. not. I was afraid. I, I have to admit that, that I was afraid. But God was faithful. But God was faithful. When I yes, saw thousands yes, of people dying in that hospital every day, I yes. trembled some days. I have a, a different kind of fear about 
I was, I woke up on 9-11 this year feeling really good. And then I start listening to the names being called of those who were killed. And the fear came over me like, what's next, Lord? What's next? And it, yeah, I, had a, I had a terrible day that day mm -hmm. because I, I trust God. But these crazy people and the things that they do. And COVID was something that didn't respect any person. But 9-11 was purposely aimed at destroying our, our faith, destroying our belief that God could take care of us because you're these idiots flying planes into buildings. And I had a hard time on 9-11. And it was not fear from then, but fear for now. And what will happen next? Amen. That is so true. Because even on last uh, week, 9-11, and the news and everything brought up about it and what happened. I can remember my daughter called me from Ford and I was on the bed drinking a cup of coffee and she said, mama, turn on the TV. I saw that plane burst. Yep. That meant I saw it burst. I took the plane for a cruise last week. And my thought, you tell me, I, I've been praying ever since my daughter was taking me out of the country, just praying and thinking, I, I, see that sometimes the devil can try to find your weakness and he try to make fools out of you when you say, uh, do you know the last time, you know, like to go out that country, you didn't like to do that forever now. His country, you, you, you didn't like, but things were going to come in to say, I'm going to fear that plane. And I said, devil, get behind me because you, see, you trying to find my weakness here to fear that plane. On the first class of it behind the pilot, I'm looking. And I'm looking at the window. Never would do that. Because, oh, I just fear. My daughter just closed her eyes and she was just holding her hand. And I said, what's, what's wrong? I know the pilot. And then really a little bit like she who is the chief pilot here? And looked from that, got into that country. And I said, fear, get behind me too. But I had to admit, I had fear of just the idea of the plane bursting up and that haven't been 9-11 they do it now and that was the one in uh metro when it fell that i think it was on Millbit, but that was one little girl that was alive with all of those on the plane amen so don't let that fear get you the next is marriage ephesians 5 33 and someone can come up with james 5 13 i know we're getting close Ephesians 5.33. Yes. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Amen, amen, yes. And you go back to Genesis. God created Adam first, and then he created his helper, and wife is who? Adam and what? Eve. Therefore, it says, once it was created and then created his helper, in marriage, the marriage verse, then he said, therefore, shall a man, what, leave mother and father and shall clean unto his, what, wife, and they shall become, what, one flesh. Come on, Emma. Come on, Reverend Allen. Come on. <laughs> love mama, love kids, but also when he said, love thy wife as Christ also loved the church. I had one friend that said that. I asked that question one time, and the friend of Reverend Allen in Jamaica also said the word that I said, what would you do? He said, if my mother and my wife both fell into the water and was drowning, I'd be honest to say, I'm going to save my wife first. But I'm going back for my mother. But number one, I'm going to save my wife. So have there been a challenge in your life, in your marriage? What did you think? God still got it because he first put it together, but you become one flesh. One flesh meaning what? All things that is in everything. I, I sometimes hear people say, you know, why did you go in there and steal his money? So I'm, I'm like, 
okay, what you mean steal? You didn't ask and you didn't pack up the bank account. You took out the savings account. You know, you, you did this and you did that. That was, that was disrespect. Why would you do that? And <laughs> I, I'm thinking about the person to say, but now, come on now. Scripture said we won what? We won flesh. So what would just be one quick comment <laughs> on that of the marriage? And even when Jesus said you won one flesh, and it comes down to your checking account that says your name all by itself. And I have taught a lot about marriage and counseling. We did one at the cinema years ago on uh, marriage and the exact things of what the Bible was saying about marriage and what you learn in school, we had a marriage class and what we learned. And I thought very well, if Reverend Allen might even say, well, tone down a little bit. You mentioned. And in the marriage class and you give comments, what did you say in the marriage class? I can have what I want or I could do that, but we have to stick with what we believe even in the marriage because sometimes people can have what they call um, just a marriage to say that we just don't think together, we don't really communicate together. And most of the time it's finance anyway. And just so of a loving person that he was to not to, we all follow the same scripture from the same school from the same Bible. And I'm knowing what it would have us to do. So you haven't run out on certain things in your marriage that seems unbearable. Now I tell you, sickness can seem unbearable. A lot of people used to say that, how is it a best friend in Georgia, we went to the same seminary and say, I don't know how you live. And I don't know how in the world you can bear what he's going through. But you know what? We both knew Christ as our savior in all of our lives we worked on. And we believe it. But if God had said, if he had asked as the apostle Paul to move the throne and God says, not, not, no, not moving it. Because he always would quote, God is sufficient. And he wouldn't, he never really complained about it. And I didn't either. But I never questioned God. Because from the day I was born in my mother's womb and he said, I set you apart and I ordain you and set you apart. So and sister, I believe, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. is in all that you said that you endure and all that we have to endure in 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 our marriages if we if we tunnel back to the scripture that you laid this foundation on about he will make a way of escape um um i i i, I thought about you know they got these things called escape rooms now that people mm -hmm. go to and and it's a game that you that you play. They put you in a room, because I ain't never going to one because I'm claustrophobic. They put you in a room and they lock you in it. It's mm -hmm. a game. They lock you in this room and you have to figure out how to get out of that room. Yeah. And and so there, and so I'm and I'm saying that to say sometimes some of these things that we go through in life and marriage and with loss of jobs fearful situations. It's like being in an escape room and we trying to figure our way out of this stuff and try to figure out how to do this. You know, I need money. So I'm going in here and I'm going to take this money or I need this, I need that. It's an, like an escape room. But that passage says, when we get to those places in, the, in, the, in that game, the escape room, there's always somebody on the other side of that room with a key. That when you can't take that escape room anymore, they can always unlock that door. Mm -hmm. I believe the same things that you're saying to us today is that you're telling us when you lose a job, when you get fearful, when your marriage starts going through difficulties, when six comes upon one of us in our circumstances in life, don't we cannot forget God stands on the other side of that stuff with a way for us to escape it. Amen. Oh, oh come on. How to endure in it to show us how to endure in it this because is, like you said sometimes even at this hotel now you said claustrophobic yeah at the hospital chaplain i'm waiting this is truthful i'm waiting for more than one two people to get on an elevator because i'm thinking if this elevator stops and sometimes one did with a nine month lady uh, on there and it took hours for it to be unlocked so i'm thinking yes 
but God can come and he'd make way out of nowhere. And we know exactly what James is saying um, about uh, sickness in James 5.13. Uh, it says, is, is any sickness among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with all in the name of Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall take him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. God is number one in what he do. And even if we go to any type of cancer in any type of situation you go through, the God can bring you through it. He got his own time to do it, but he can bring you through it. So believe and know that what God can do. Financial trouble, yes, we say in that Psalms 9-9, is you can look at that to say all, but all things in Mark 9, 23 is what Jesus said. If you would, if you can believe all things are what possible to him that believe, you can get out of this. And the only way you get out, you ask God to bring you out. But he already know before you got it. He knows before we even begin to think what's going on. He know what you is running. And all of these things, but he'll make a way out of no way. So I really ask you to believe, truly believe, and to act on it. Call the Father. I am your Father. Call the Father and ask for deliverance. And a deliverance will come. Any situation in life, God can deliver you. And not only that, as Isaiah said in 40, wait, be patient. Don't be in a hurry. Be still and know I'm God. And I bring it through. Any other questions or any comments as we get to the close of the song? Love everyone for your participation in this lesson and please have a memory to bring through anything you might have gone through. But if you're going through it today, the same God, always spirit and in truth can bring you through any situation that you go through right now. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Wonderful amen. lesson. Sister Allen, and what I'm going to ask, if it's okay with you, I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Butler just to provide us with the prayer. And right at the conclusion of the prayer, we'll go with that song that I believe will encapsulate everything that you taught in such a wonderful lesson this morning. Thank you. Love you, Sister <laughs> Reverend Samples, for doing the power works and everything. You're so good. You read your Bible and you follow your Bible every day. Brothers keep it, yes. Bless you. Bless you. Re Reverend Butler? Father God, first we say thank you for this opportunity of fellowship. Thank you for allowing us to absorb the message that was sent to us. You say iron sharpens iron. Let us go forth and spread the good news of a living God. We just thank you. We praise you and you lift you up. And thank you for GMC Saturday Sunday School. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Can you all hear it? Hearts are broken.